after the first quarter we're like having 18 points, did you guys try and switch things up defensively like maybe some blitzes or be more aggressive? It wasn't like he was in a blitzable situation, right? Like he wasn't coming off pick and rolls. He wasn't setting pick and rolls. He was either coming off catch and shoots, which are very hard to blitz, or he was getting his catch and shoot as a result of driving kick. And the free throws were the biggest part. It's always the biggest part. When a guy gets a bunch of points, it's your ability to be disciplined and not foul them and put him on the line 13 times. That's usually how it works. Coach, you talked a lot about Jabari Smith Jr. being a defensive anchor for this team. Um, what did you see from, from him tonight in terms of his struggles? Yeah, I mean, he got in foul trouble for sure. Um, probably some of the back-to-back. Um, you know, it's hard for younger guys to play back-to-backs. Um, so he just didn't seem like he was in rhythm tonight, but he'll be back. Talked a lot about Jay Sean's ball handling. And yeah. What that would bring. You had him out there a lot just with one one guard and had yeah. him playing with Tari and with KJ. Just what did you think of, of him playing with those two guys specifically? I think it could be really good. I think we could really get after it defensively. I think we can rebound. Um, you know, the his ability to put pressure on the defense can minimize some of the shooting issues we might have. We got to just make sure we have shooting on the floor with them, but. He's plug and play, like wherever we need him, whether it's the one man, the five man, whatever, He's uh, he has the ability to, to make an impact. One of his first possessions came after a timeout. He inbounded the ball to him and he just went right to the rim. Is that just something <laughs> that he can add just getting down there like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we initiated uh, two or three um, ATOs with him ha- handling the ball and he made the right plays, so yeah. It's pretty clear what Beasley wants to do when he's in the game. Well, they're just defensive breakdowns and miscommunications. Yeah, for right? sure, for sure. It was like it was lack of um, experience, lack of like <laughs> it was. They were coming off the pick and roll. We were we had a low man, and we just it's like a simple, simple play that we were not making. But our younger guys got to learn to make the, the that like simple. Simple rotation. It's not. A, it's not a hard play, and they just kept going to it. So I called the timeout, tried to clean it up, and they didn't run it again after that. Was that some of the same thing that we saw with Abanji in the fourth quarter? You got two wide open corner threes, and I think you called the timeout to get the open three. Yeah, for yeah, the for sure, yeah. for sure. It's rotation. It's like basic. Low man goes. Next man sinks. Next man rotates. You played for a while with four fouls. Are you, are you getting more comfortable with him to do that? Yeah, I, I I usually don't have a issue with guys having four fouls. I usually kind of let guys play through having four fouls. Um, so uh, as long as they're staying aggressive, and um, you know, offensively he was he was uh, very aggressive and uh, very aggressive on the on the boards. We still didn't do a very good job on the defensive end. We got to clean that up. Watching your team get down last night and then watching them play as hard as they played tonight. What, what do you think that your team's identity is <laughs> at this point? Yeah, we're, we're a hard playing team who has ups and downs and goes through our struggles, but we really care about winning. We really care about each other. And uh, we're going to steadily improve as the season goes along. So I'm, I'm never going to be negative about my group. Never, ever, never. A big lead in the first quarter, and they hit you with a big run. Yep. You got the lead back in the third, and they hit you with another run. How do you avoid those kind of long, sustained runs? Um, it's it's tough. It's tough. We gotta like, <laughs> for lack of a better term, we gotta make some shots. <laughs> you know, we had some we had some shots at the rim that we missed. We had a couple of threes that we missed, uh, and then it's the stops. It's the attention to detail on the defensive end where. They're going to the free throw line. They shot seven free throws in the first half, and then they shot 14 in the second half, and that's a big difference um, as far as, yeah, being able to stop runs. How fluid is the offense once Alpi starts imposing his will down in the low post? It's good. It's, 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 as long as he's passing the ball out of the post and not um, trying to do too much, it's good. Uh, and the guys are willing to give him the ball because he's willing to give it back. Um, We just got to make sure that shot selection for everybody, not just him, shot selection is good.
For someone in tape that's been with you for so long, how was it just having him on the sidelines, yeah. getting huddles again, just that familiarity? It was great. <laughs> he, he helps so much. I mean, he helps me. He helps the group. He talks a lot. He uh, wasn't, you know, he played well tonight, but he's still like rusty and all that stuff. But his just energy is really good for our group. I, I'm really happy to have him back because because it's sometimes it's not what you say; it's how you say it. And he always says things in a good way. And sometimes it's not the message; it's the messenger. And he always like has a way of kind of letting guys know without uh, being like preachy. Is his defensive ability to, to switch and guard big guys so well, does that make you you know, more <clears throat> apt to maybe go away from the, the three center rotation like you did tonight? Like to it's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Um, he, he's just very versatile. So um, making sure that he gets minutes is going to be important for sure. But everybody's got to be ready, everybody. Another tough loss like this. Mm -hmm. How do you go about staying positive? Because you know you, you talked about the frustration a couple of days ago, but at yeah. the same time, there's moments where you see potential of what this team could be. Yeah, I mean, I'm always going to be positive. I'm, there's days where I'm uh, frustrated <laughs> and uh, frustrated with the losing and stuff, but I'm, I'm always going to be positive with this group because they are they deserve it. Number one. Number two, I understand the ins and outs of being uh, the head coach of a rebuilding team. And I understand that there's frustration in the locker room, in the coach's room, with the fans, everybody. I get that. But I'm going to be the one who's going to be positive. And, uh, and that rubs off on others. And it rubs off on our locker room. And it rubs off on our fans. And it rubs off on a bunch of people. So... Um, yeah, that, that's my motivation. I'm, I'm a positive person. I'm always going to be positive. <laughs> and uh, this is going to be a, uh, a fun thing once we get it all together. It's hard right now, but we're going to get it. You talk highly of um, Jay Sean as far as his energy and what he brings to the court, but also can you talk about his intangibles and willingness to be coached? Yeah, yeah. So he is very, very coachable wants to be challenged, um, points things out for me that maybe I don't see, which are which is great. You always want a guy on the floor who sees it and is like, hey, maybe we could go 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 to this. That's uh, something that he does consistently. So our communication for the la for the first thirty whatever games when he wasn't playing, we talked quite a bit, but now there's like real stuff to talk about so um yeah he we're gonna be uh, you see you see what we can be now that he's back and, and uh we just gotta put it all together thanks coach, thanks, yep. coach. Thank